Hello everybody and welcome back. I have a foam pauldron. You know what's missing? Foam spikes. I'm going to show you how to make them right here on the Evil Ted channel. This video is sponsored by TNT Cosplay Supplies, a great resource for foam for your cosplay building needs. Now, let's get started. All right, here's my spike. I made myself a poster board template. It's five inches long with an inch and a half wide base, and I'm going to make this out of foam using 10 millimeter uh, foam I got from TNT Cosplay. Thank you so much. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut a strip the exact width of my spike. Um, lay it down. Now realizing this is going to be a four-sided spike, I need to stack this foam uh, four times tall. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to cut these guys the length they need to be. So I discover when you're doing that, always go above the spike itself. All right. Now I cut this. I'm going to go ahead and cut four more of these. All right, as you see, I got my four pieces. You stack them, and it actually comes to the same width as my spike on the side. So now I got them all cut. I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue these all together. Now, being this is raw foam, um, which is this foam is so great, it's very poor. So I always discover that it's good just to put on one coat, let it dry a little bit, and put a second coat. So definitely two coats of glue to stick these pieces together. The glue is dry and ready to apply. Now, what I have to do is when you do this, make sure you line them up on the edge, flush as possible. On the bottom and on the side. Just pick one of the sides, because when you cut these things, they're not going to be completely symmetrical, but you just want to make sure you get them as close. So I just try to just pick one side to keep flush at all times when stacking your foam. Okay, now we got them all stacked. This is where I take my um, template, lay it up, get my straight pin. You know, I know we don't talk about the silver Sharpie and the, uh, the chalk pencil. I just discovered these little chalk roller. Where have you been all my life? This thing's great. You put it on here, a little wheel on your edge. And voila, look at that. <clears throat> I'll never use a silver Sharpie again. Now that we got this, let's go ahead and cut this on the band saw. Now, before I start cutting this out, I always like to cut on the outside of the white line. Not actually on the line, but I actually like to go up just outside the white line. Now, we're going to put our pattern on this side. Okay, now we're ready for uh, round two. Once again, when I cut, I always like to start with the tip very carefully. Ta-da! There is our four-sided spike. Now we got this. What I'm going to do is take, I take my 220 grit sandpaper on the stick and lay this down and sand it. This is going to do is get rid of the um, bandsaw blade marks on the uh, foam. But also, remind you, I want to tell you is when you're sanding, always keep it on a flat table so you don't distort your tip. And also, when you're sanding, go toward the tip. Never come toward, away from it because you might just snag it and pull it and twist it. So I've always found just to keep the tip and always sand toward it very gently. So I'm going to just do all four sides. Now I go right next to my, uh, my 320. Now this is always, it just helps because when we go back in, we're definitely going to heat seal this foam. But I always find it's better to keep sanding, get all that nice, get the fuzzies out of it. It just looks so much better. That extra step really makes a difference, everyone. Okay, now that this properly sanded, my next step is to go ahead and heat seal this. Now, I know most of you people out there know how much I love using the torch, but I discovered in the past that with the torch, you can melt this tip, if not burn it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it on the end of my X-Acto blade, make it easy handling, get my heat gun, and do my heat sealing with the heat gun. There it is, my four-sided spike. Um, nice and sharp tip, got it all heat sealed, ready to go. Uh, for the pauldron I'm making, it turns out I need nine more of these. So I gotta do this nine more times. Wash, rinse, and repeat. There they are, the foam spikes. Already cut and ready to go. 
Now, if you're going to stick them onto a flat piece of armor, you're good to go. But right now, my armor, I have a shoulder, everything's curved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concave these in. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you that technique. I'm going to, I like to lay my spikes down like a triangular formation. Square, not so exciting, but you do a little bit of an angle so you can see the edges, much more exciting. So I'm going to dremel deep into the center all the way to the edges, but I would like to start with one side just to make everything symmetrical. I start with the side first. There you go. See, I, I got one side right here. I, I, go, I go deep in the side and just do just up in the edges. And now I got this to guarantee this, to make it symmetrical, I flip over and do this side. Because sometimes you would tr people try to do everything at the same time and it kind of gets uneven. So I like to do one side first, flip it over, and do the other side. And I'm always going a little deeper in the center. Okay? All right, now I have my spike all properly concave. Let's go ahead and there's my shoulder piece. I know you're probably out there asking, what is this, Ted? This is quick seal. As a matter of fact, I did a video on that, on how to make uh, clean seams right here. Definitely check that out. Now, back to the shoulder. Go ahead and have the concave. Let's go into a test fit. See how it sits on there? Nice and flush. Now I got this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's do the rest of the spikes and uh, figure out my placement of where I'm going to put these. Okay, I went ahead and found my placement for my spikes. And I'm going to go ahead and brush on my, uh, my barge cement. The, um, as I put the glue in, I always like to go past my Sharpie lines just to get a guaranteed lock. I always, because sometimes people don't want to go over their spots. I always find it's easier just when you're putting glue on. Some people like to go right to the edge, and I think it's just always safe to go a little bit beyond it. Get if you get a guaranteed lock, because sometimes foam has a tendency to move when you're gluing things down, so you just want to compensate. Okay, now the glue is dry, just with the fun, <laughs> the fun starts. Got my spike. Line it up. Where my mark? The best part, the very top. There we go. There is my uh, the the spike shoulder. I know it's a, it's a bit drastic, but uh, a little extreme. But that's what I'm kind of going for. Now here's the forearm. Some of you guys can notice, uh, I made these big spikes for the shoulder, and I realized for the forearm, they're just a bit too much. So I made smaller ones for the forearm piece here. Got little twos on the top, a little bit here. And just uh, aesthetically, it just thinks it looks a little bit better if they're just a tad bit smaller. Now that we got that done, let's jump onto the bicep and put a spike on that one. Okay, there's the bicep. And of course, this big spike will work on the bicep, I think. I'm just going to put it a little bit low toward the... Uh, like that, because the shoulder piece kind of hangs in over this, kind of like, kind of like that. So that's where just I think we just have room for just one of these big monsters. There you go. Okay. Now I got all the spikes on. Let's put this thing together and take a look at it. Now that's how you make foam spikes. Yeah, I know. I look like somebody from a heavy metal band. This video was sponsored by TNT Cosplay Supply, a great resource for foam. If you guys first time watching this video, don't forget to subscribe where I have other videos on foam fabricating. Also, go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, and get on my mailing list. And while you're there, you can go to my store where I have patterns for sale. As a matter of fact, if you want to do some shopping, go through my links, which goes through Amazon, which helps me keep making videos. As a matter of fact, I stream live on Twitch TV uh, Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 11 Pacific Standard Time. Guys, also, don't forget to come back because I'm going to show you how to do some detail and battle damage on these. Catch you back next time right here on the Old Ted channel.